My name is Aiden Karabiak. I am the project lead on Pulse. Uh, we are extremely excited about the presentation we have to show you and the game that we're developing. Hopefully by the end of this, you see why we're so excited. You feel a little bit of the same way. So I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's get right to it. All right. Let's go. My name is Seth Ellis and I'm the lead designer on Pulse. Pulse is a futuristic arcade style sports game. But before I get into the mechanics of the game, I want to talk a little bit about space. Space is something that maybe we all take for granted. We all occupy and move around in it, but sometimes we don't consider how important it is in a relative sense. Like right now, Ryan's probably pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm a little close to him. He doesn't have enough space. But if we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and I'm all the way over here, we don't really feel like we're connected anymore. Maybe he has a little too much space. And ultimately, despite being a sports game, despite being an arcade game, our game is about space. So now, I want to show you what our game really is. Magnets. Think about magnets. They're pretty good at pushing other things away from them. Whoop. Sometimes they <laughs> bring things closer to them. That's ultimately what our game's about. Our game is about creating and restricting space towards a tom common goal. Players work like magnets. They can pull things towards them or they can push things away from them. Whichever players use that to the best of their advantage will end up winning this game. Now, I said our game's a sports game. And like any good sport, rules gotta be simple. I gotta be able to teach it to you real quick. So here we go, three slides. Four players per team. No need to explain on that. Second, <laughs> running, there's a goal. Running the ball into the goal is worth five points. Shooting the ball into the goal, two points. Players can only do a couple things. They run around, jump, move. They can pick up and throw the ball. Or they can use an attract ability or a repulse ability. All attract abilities in the game are about bringing yourself closer to other things in the environment or bringing other things in the environment closer to you. <coughs> repulse abilities are about putting yourself farther away from other objects in the environment or putting other objects in the environment farther away from you. Now, like any sport, there's different positions. Uh, not all players come in the same shapes and sizes. So there are a lot of different attract and repulse abilities in the game, but ultimately they follow that same fundamental core. So what we'd like to show you is a de um, <clears throat> our prototyping tool that we made in Unreal Tournament to kind of explain these ideas maybe more visually. Alright, so like I said, scoring, running the ball in is worth five points. Sometimes you're not going to need to do any sort of fancy uh, space creation tricks. There's just nobody in front of you. Grab the ball, take it into the goal, five points, get out of there. Now, sometimes, however, there's going to be a defender. And you might not be able to do that whole creation restriction of space. So instead, you grab the ball, you run up, you can shoot it in. Not as many points, but sometimes you just want to take your points and get out of there. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> And we're talking about some of the positions. Here's the first position, one of the first positions. His attraction, the runner. He's a position who can attract towards the enemy goal. So if he can get into open space, get out of there. Avoid a tackle, run in for the goal. Another position that we have in our game is the shooter. His attraction doesn't work on players, it works on the ball. He instead can attract the ball towards him, take stealing possession of it from an enemy player. One of the other positions is the defender. Now he's gonna, he's, we're going to show one of his repulsion abilities. He pushes everything away from him. Player's ball, everything. Might disconnect the ball from the player. So for example, running up, trying to think he's going to score. But uh-oh, there's a defender there. Boop. See ya. Get that ball and get out of there. Another position, we have six in the game. We're going to show you only four right now, is a launcher. Now he can repulse friendly players, using you to traverse the environment, to get over obstacles, get around enemy players. Now, this kind of gives the idea of how the game mechanics work, of how that creation restriction of space can work towards a common goal. So what we're going to show you now is a gameplay target video that we made. This is a pre-rendered video. It's not gameplay, but we hope that it's a target for us. It's something that we can 
we can emulate in, uh, in our final product. And it also, because the game is not just about mechanics, it's also about the character and the flavor. And so we hope that this gives you a little bit more of the style of what we actually want to put on the screen as a final product. showed you that it may be more of a, a, a real game, <clears throat> an in-game sense. Back to the slides! <clears throat> but what you just saw was mechanics, and sometimes making a game is about more than just putting assets or code into an engine. So we really thought about where does this game fit? Where does this fit in relative to other games in the environment? So we looked at the market. We thought, well, there's a market for arcade sports games, but what if we could make something that was better than that? What if we could make something that transcended whether or not you liked football or basketball? And we tapped into that competitive multiplayer market. The people who played Street Fighter 4, who played Modern Warfare 2, but might not necessarily like fighting games, or might not like first person shooters, but they're there for that high level of competition. So as we started developing this game, we started with an internal Razor statement, something like Team Fortress 2 meets NFL Blitz. And hopefully you can see that sort of arcade feeling sports mixed with the classes and positions that we have in our game. But as we got further into it, we thought, what sets our game apart? What's something that really um, creates a differentiating X factor of our game? And we started working towards things like, this is the sport and you are the star, or your perspective on sports. So that says, what is, what is our differentiating feature? What's our X factor? Um, what is our X Factor? And our X Factor of our game is you! No sound? Okay, that's cool. That's when Soldier Boy was supposed to play. Um, let's see, Ryan gets it. Uh, this is good enough. Do we have a demo of this? Hmm? We have a demo of this, don't we? Let's show the demo. Oh, right! I totally skipped over Gabriel! Boop! Um, we're gonna go to Gabriel. It's early in the morning for me. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. So here's our progress so far in Gabriel. <coughs> um, as you can see, we have a menu that very closely emulates EA sports games. We really wanted to, to touch into that market to really so they understand right away that this is, in fact, a sports game. Um, creating the map before the game, players can pick their position of what they want to play of the six that we have in the game. You saw four of these six earlier. <coughs> All right. And our biggest fear was, were we able to get these things that we were able to concept on paper and emulate into Unreal Tournament, can we get that into Gamebryo? And uh, we could. We have our environment here. Uh, we kind of have much more of a, a futuristic feel with our stadium. Outside the stadium would be, you know, crowd, people cheering, but we like the little holographic effort. We were able to get the ball in, throwing the ball. <coughs> Where is, uh-oh, enemy player. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kino. And we were able to repulse people and track. <laughs> um, so we were able, obviously the full game would have particle effects and more visual feedback as to what's going on, but we were just making sure that on a fundamental level we could get these physics into the game and we were able to do that. Um, there's also other sorts of the abilities you saw, like a uh, dash towards the ball and things like that. Um, that's good. So yeah, we were actually able to get that in the game so far. Back around. Back to the slides. <laughs> um, right. So, better multiplayer. You, you are the X Factor of our game. <laughs> um, you. There it is. All right. <laughs> You're the X Factor of our game. Because right now, you live in a pretty selfish culture. Everyone's interested in Facebook and MySpace and Twitter. People want to get out their opinions and their viewpoints, oftentimes at the expense of the group or team that they're a part of. Don't believe me? Let's talk basketball for a second. 
Shane Battier, ultimate glue guy, ultimate teamwork guy, makes his teammates better and his opponents worse. Stats though, eh, could be better and didn't really do much by himself. Kobe Bryant on the other hand, ooh, glares at teammates, bad sportsmanship, just his teammates don't really like him, kind of a brooding loner, but his stats are eye popping, he's a great player, super talented. So, but tell me Phil, when you're getting ready to go to bed at night and you're getting in your onesie footsie pajamas, and you dream of being an NBA superstar, would you rather be Kobe Bryant or Shane Battier? Uh, I think I'd rather be Kobe. Kobe? Well, he's got a bigger paycheck, doesn't he? It doesn't he, <laughs> right? But now, don't, don't feel bad about things, though, because you're really not alone. In this very scientific study that I did in my head, 99.8% of people <laughs> would rather be Kobe Bryant. And the other 2%, Shane and his mama. <laughs> so, the thing is that everyone kind of wants to be that super duper star. And in that sense, a lot of sports sims really aren't made for you as the individual. Um, you've got Campus Legend mode in the, in the in NCAA, and I have my Campus Legend. He was a wide receiver. I wanted to be a part of those big plays. I wanted to be bringing down the, the game-winning catches. But a lot of times I'm playing, and I run my route, and I stand there, ready to make the big catch, and nobody throws to me. Sometimes I'm, you know, not even in the play. I've got to watch the play from the sidelines. That's not, that's not really what I want to do. I mean, I want to be a wide receiver, but I don't actually want to be a wide receiver. I want to be a sports center wide receiver. I want to make all the big catches, I want to be on the highlight reels. That's what I want to do. Why can't all games be like that? And we hope that we were able to emulate that in the game to make a sport that really focused on individual accomplishment. So how do we do that? Well, only four players on a team. With such a small number on the team, there's no way that you're not an integral part of every single play. <coughs> we really wanted individual achievement to be good. We wanted to reward people for being selfish by being able to pull their team up. So for example, um, if you make a run into the end zone, yeah, it's five points. But if you make that diving one-handed catch into the end zone at the end of a quarter, maybe there's a score bonus. Or if your team's down and you just rise above and lead and make three consecutive scores in a row, maybe those points start becoming worth more because you're leading that comeback. I mean, it's an arcade game, so we really want to have this sort of encouragement to, to play as an over-the-top way. And uh, we really feel like that kind of stuff can reward people who are looking to play for themselves while still helping the team win. We've even thought about how we can make this in a marketing sense. How would we sell this game? We really wanted to focus, and even in our marketing, about how you, like, as the, as the individual rises above the team and sort of puts the team on his back and, and carries the team to victory. Um, keeping in with that market, we were able to get in touch with GFC New York, which is a music label, and sign several um, <coughs> rap artists that really kind of embody this me first culture. Uh, but if we're gonna make this game, we need more people. This is currently our org chart. I'm really proud we've been able to do work to the smallest team here at FIA, but we've been able to do so much stuff in these six weeks that I can't even imagine what we're gonna do with more people. Um, this would be our ideal team post vertical slice. The number of slots up there are, exact, are equal to exactly half the cohort. So obviously give or take a few, but this would be our ideal team, and we feel like with this team, we can carry our vision to completion. Um, we were able to play test last week. We were able to bring in some people. They played the, UD, uh, the Unreal Tournament mod that you saw a little bit earlier, albeit an older build. Um, we were able to get some really good feedback from them. Um, and some things we're really happy about. We're really happy that people were repulsing a lot. But we would have liked to see them attract more. And there would seem to be a disconnect there. Um, they felt like they mattered a lot, which was a really good thing. I mean, that's, if the whole game focused around individual achievement, that's good. But we actually felt that maybe teamwork mattered a little too much. Maybe defense was too strong. And we needed to tweak that down. The reason why I'm able to tell you this is because all 10 people on our team have such a solid vision of the game that we're making that we could take these numbers and interpret them the way the, you know, to make the game that we, we knew we wanted to make. Um, we have <coughs> Here at FI, we've been taught that a good idea is an engine of creativity. It is something that you tell to someone when they get it, just ideas and suggestions start, start flowing out of them. So what you're seeing on this slide is not even a third of the ideas we've come up with, but these are the ones we really want to focus on. People being able to create a player, have online matchmaking and stat tracking, things that really allow you to show off who you are. Like, think when you go onto an MMO forum and you've got your post and then next to it's your name. And it's your name and your character and his level, and you can click on it and see his gear and his stats and his achievements. We want that. We want the people to be proud of their character and proud of, of the things they've been able to do within our game. We want them to be able to show that off. Um, and with that said, we encourage everyone to visit whatsyourpulse.com. We've got dev diaries. Uh, we've got concept art. Give the, the books. Yeah. I'm going to pass out to the executives these little uh, development documents we made. There you go. That have um, way more information than we could ever present up here. We've got concept art in there, articles written by the staff, or by the staff, by uh, the team. Um, all sorts of development cycles, pulse, uh, the code architecture, all sorts of things. But a lot of it can also be found on our website, whatsyourpulse.com. With that, I'll open up to questions.